All right, so for this lecture, we're gonna talk about the completion of metric space. So which is the theorem we ended the last lecture, okay? So we're gonna, disc uh, we're gonna discuss more on this. So before that, we need some uh, ready, like we need some lemmas, okay? So let given the metric space and a subset of X, we define the restricted metric dA, which is the metric on X restricted on the Cartesian product of A. Well, this is the this with metric topology is the same as A with the subspace topology inherited from the subspace topology of X. Okay, so this is what we want to show. So whenever we are given a subspace subspace of a given metric topology. We don't have to consider the subspace topology. We just consider the metric topology with the restricted metric, which is a lot more convenient. Okay, so DA is trivially a metric because it is restricted on A. So I just skipped the proof of that because everything we use is using the fact that A is subset A is subset of X. Okay, <laughs> so now we just prove for the both direction. So first, we given a basis element of the metric topology. Then, for any x and a, <laughs> b, this set is equal to the metric topology, the basis, and x intersect by a by definition, right? Because the dA, right? If you think about the dA, well, b is really by definition equal to this set. So the metric topology on a is contained. Is uh, is uh, contains coarser, or like weaker, than the subspace topology, right? Because this is a basis in a subspace topology. Now, conversely, let's give in a basis for the subspace topology. Then for any y, and the subspace topology and the subspace basis, we consider the set. Okay, so y is an so. So this is um, BDXE, right? This, we're intersecting with A, right? Mm -hmm. So we let pick Y, we pick Y, a point Y, right? We pick a point Y, we pick a point Y, and we just consider its little circle that is contained in A, okay? <laughs> so this is like the picture. So we give them y and the ball intersect with a, we consider y with the restricted metric with radius of epsilon minus dxy, okay? This is what we're considering. So for this set, now, for any element in this set, first, if we're in this set, the distance between u, between z and x, we have this by triangle inequality, but y and z y and z are both in they're both in a right so for this one we can just change the metric in a because y is in a and z is in by for this by definition z must lie in a right because this is a restricted metric so we can change d to da now d to da da y z still if z and like d y z right Z and Y, their distance should be less than this real number. So D A Y Z is less than epsilon minus D X Y. And these two cancel out as equal to epsilon. So D X Z is still in epsilon, which means that Z is in this, right? Which means that this is a subspace of this, right? Also Z is in A, so Z is in B D epsilon. So for any element here, it is sub subset of this, okay? <laughs> Which means that for any elements, for any basis element in the subset topology, we have found a basis element from the restricted metric such that it is contained in this. Which means that the subset topology of A is coarser or weaker than the metric topology on A. So we have shown two directions which concludes the proof okay 
So remember, like, given the topology is very, very important. Like, this is our starting point of our discussion for any topological problems, right? What topology are given? What topology are equipped with, right? If we, we have to show that the restricted metric topology is the same as the subspace topology. Because subspace topology is a topology, right? Inherited by the metric on X, right? So this is what we want to make sure, like, we want to be clear of. <laughs> and now a proposition is that we're given two metric spaces. If F is a function that has a property that it preserves distances, Right for any x one x two and x, f x one f x two, right, the distance in y is equal to the distance in x. So if we consider like this is x, right, this x one, this is x two. You can map them. They're like the same distance. Y one, y two, and same same distance i mean this is under dx but this is under dy right so it preserves it preserves distances right if we have if we have this actually i might just rearrange this equality so that it looks uh, is more clear okay let me just rearrange this equality so for any x their distance and domain is the same as their distance in your range. Then, if a function has this property, we we see that we we're going to show that this is an embedding. It is called the isometric embedding of x and y. So f is an embedding. So, first, if f is injective, right? F is injective if I mean not if like we want to show that f is it is injective. And it's injective because if f x one is equal to f x two, then just equal to zero. We have this, which means that x one is equal to x two. Right? So thanks to the isometric property, right? If it, it is injective, which means that we let f x equal to z considered as a subspace of y. See? Then we restrict we restrict f to f prime to be a bijective function. If f prime is a homeomorphism between x and z, then f is an embedding. Okay, it's an embedding or embedding. Let me search the word. Forgive my uh, forgive my pronunciation. Sorry. All right, it is called embedding. So I've been guessing the the word correctly. So f prime is a homeomorphism, to, and it's an embedding. We have shown that this is the same as the subset topology obtained from y, right? <laughs> so we know, and we we know, we know that for a continuous function in a metric space, is that for any point and for any epsilon, there's a delta such that we have this, okay? F prime continuous. So this is the equivalence uh, characterization of continuous function and metric spaces, okay? So it is obvious, right? For this condition, it is obvious because we're having isometry, right? For any x, for any epsilon, we, if we just let, if we just let delta equals to epsilon, now if dx y is less than epsilon, so from here, dx y is less than epsilon, first we have f prime y as in z. Right? So dz of f prime and y f prime y is defined. Right? You must lighten the space then and then you can discuss their their restricted uh, metric. Right? And we know that this is the same as this. Right? Right? Because the restricted metric, right? This is the restricted metric. We just pass it to the original metric. It doesn't really matter. We can pass this to fx and fy. fx and fy is equal to dx and dy. And dx and dy, I mean dx, so distance of x and y is less than a delta, which is equal to epsilon, right? Which shows that f prime is continuous. Now we show the inverse function is also continuous, which means that 
or you could just conclude by yourself, right? Is left as an exercise. Right? For the inverse function, right, we just consider well. For any y and z, we, we can write y in terms of f, f prime x. So we can just say that for any f prime x, there is an epsilon, uh, for any epsilon, which is let delta equal to e uh, epsilon, so that if for input as delta close, then, right, we have this, right, then dxy is equal to this, is equal to this, it was this, yeah, yeah. So, so we have shown f prime is a homeomorphism, right? Your function and your infant function are both continuous, so you are a homeomorphism. So this is an embedding, right? The <coughs> restricted, restricted range function, restricted range function, it is a homeomorphism, right? Where this is under the subspace topology, under subspace topology. But we have shown in metric space, it is the same as the restricted metric topology is the same as the subspace topology, right? So let's get you guys to know that if this fun this function is embedding, okay? So we're not on the main part of the theorem yet. I mean, of the lecture yet. So recall the theorem 43.7. What I guess is in the book. Yes, it's this one. So for any metric space, there is an isometric embedding of x into a complete metric space. Okay? For any metric space, it can be isometrically embedding embedded into a complete metric space okay so this is a good thing to know so we're going to prove it we give another proof okay the proof is more direct and i wish you could pause and think about the details by yourself because those are all um they're all epsilon delta stuff i just want you guys to know like the the logic okay the details the technical details are not hard, okay? As long as you're familiar with the epsilon delta proof. Trust. Okay? So to start. So we're given a metric space. We wish to find an isometric embedding where yd is complete. Right? So first we start with this definition x tilde is the set of all Cauchy sequence in X. So of all Cauchy sequence in X. And we define X is equivalent to Y, F, F tilde Y, equivalent to Y, if we have this. Okay, so their term gets arbitrarily close. We define this. And we let this to denote the equivalent class. Okay? And we, we, we're given a set of Cauchy sequences, like why we define this, we're going to see later. And we define their equivalent if their term gets close, right? Arbitrarily close. And we let this denote the equivalence class. So this is all the y such that y is equivalent to x. And we let the big y to denote a set of equivalence classes. Denote a metric on y as d for two elements for two equivalence classes their distance is defined as this okay so we just need to verify stuff we verify that first this is an equivalence relation okay well i'll just i'll just uh shut up and you guys can just look at it okay. Triangle inequality, we apply the squeeze theorem, right? Those are real sequences. They're all real sequences. We can just apply this squeeze theorem. It's an ordered field, right? And we show that D is well defined. So we want to show that for x equal to w, y equal to z, then their distance are the same. Okay? So if x is equal to w, x is equal to w, y equal to z, y is equal to z, they're their distance is the same, like, are the same, sorry. I.e., if, well, if x is equal to w, then x is equivalent to w, right? And y is equivalent to z, or this implies this, this implies this. And I mean, I mean, if and only if, though, right? If you think of it, yeah, if you think about it, yeah, it's if and only if. 
So if you have this, implies this. This is equal to this by definition. This is equal to this by definition. Okay. So first, we show that this exists no matter what. So from here, we're using the fact that they're Cauchy. Okay, let me just delete it. My notation was kind of wrong at the beginning. So we first show that this exists no matter what. From here, we're going to use the fact that there are Cauchy sequences. We pick n a color for both of them being Cauchy. So we have... <coughs> Um, so we show that this sequence is a Cauchy sequence, right? So the sequence of their distances, the sequence of distances is Cauchy, so that the limit exists, because real number R R K under Euclidean metric and the submetric is complete. Okay, it's proved the last lecture. Okay, so we just say that oh, if their the distances are Cauchy, well. It's just by triangle inequality, okay? It is simply by triangle inequality. This is triangle inequality twice, I mean once, and this is by triangle inequality again. If, you, if you, this goes to this, this goes to this. And they're both Cauchy, so we're done. I mean, N and M is kind of, it's kind of bad, I'm sorry. It should, it should be more clear, okay? So, x, n, y, n, x, m, and y, m. They're, this sequence is Cauchy. Right? So, this is Cauchy, so it converges. So, this limit always exists. But for arbitrary sequences, does this, does this limit exist? No, right? not necessarily. But we have pick in, and we're chosen x and y for being Cauchy, then we can do this triangle inequality. So, now you see why, right? We want the set of all Cauchy sequences. <laughs> Now next, next, this is less than or equal to this plus I mean triangle inequality twice. And you take limit on both sides. This goes to zero because they're equivalent. This goes to zero again because there's equivalent. Which means that, which means that this is less than or equal to this. And by symmetry, we can do this, right? So they're the same. So D is well defined. Third thing we're gonna show that D is a metric, but for this I just I just pause here and let you guys take a look. Okay. I mean this is commutative, right? So we have this. This is equal to this, which is less than equal to this, which is this. Okay. So this is kind of easy to check. And now we define h from x to y. For h x, we map to the equivalence. So why is the set of equivalence classes? We give it a, a point in x. We're mapped into an equivalence class of the sequence x x x x x and so on. The constant sequence, the equivalence class of the constant sequence. So first we show that h is an isometric embedding. So first we just show that it is isometric. dxy, we want to show this, right? But d of hx and hy is the distance of this and this, right? So we could just pick the representative element, which is equal to this, which is equal to dxy. So we're done. It's an isometric embedding. It's isometric. Crazy. And another claim is to show that hx is dense and y, okay? We already shown that it's, it's an isometric embedding, but we want to show that yd is complete. We want to show that yd is complete, right? So for that, we first need to show that hx is dense and y, okay? It's dense and y, so from here, which means that we want to show that given any Cauchy sequence, I mean, given any Cauchy sequence, right? So we're having, we have given any equivalence class. We have 
we have this converges to this under the D metric, under the big D metric. So x is contained in the closure of hx. That's the y, which means that this is equal to y. Right, this is what we want to show. So we just say it like hx is dense in y. <coughs> which means that for any elements in y, right, we can find a sequence that converges to it. A sequence a sequence of points in this is in hx right they're, they're all in hx right this this is what we want so as x is cauchy we could pick if any as one we can we can achieve this eventually which means that for any m greater than n for any m greater than n this is equal to this but the limit is taken with respect to what xn right xm is fixed right because h of xm is just the equivalence class of the which is the sequence i mean if you, if you take their distance right the limit is taken with respect to n but this is less than equal to epsilon 2 because we have this right eventually we have this which means that for any m greater than n, we have this. This is less than epsilon, which means that h of x n converges to x will under the big D metric as desired. So h x is dense in y. Okay. So from here, we first we show something more general is that for any a dense in the metric space, and all Cauchy sequence in a converges in z. Okay. So a is not complete. Not necessarily complete. For any Cauchy in A, it converges to a point in Z. Then we can show that Z is complete. Okay, then Z is complete, given that A is dense in the metric space. Because we, we, we have HX is dense in Y, right? We have HX dense in Y. Okay, so for, first we show this result. The proof is that given any Cauchy sequence in Z, we can pick a y n, right? We can pick y n. We can pick a sequence, and we show that y n is Cauchy. Okay. Because each point is in Z, right? Each for each point, we can take a neighborhood of radius one over n, and we have a point y n that is in the neighborhood n and a, right? And we show that y n is Cauchy. Well, this is not really hard, because for any epsilon. If you pick n greater than 3 over epsilon and a cutoff of Zn being Cauchy. So if we estimate them, we can just use the triangle inequality twice. Right? Zn, 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 Zn. Right? So from here, we know that n, n is greater than equal to n, m is greater than n, right? But n is greater than, greater than 3 over epsilon. So in total, those three things plus add together less than epsilon. So it is Cauchy. If it's Cauchy, our condition is that all Cauchy sequences A converge in X. So what n converges on point Y for Y is contained in Y belongs to Z. Now, which means that, and also we have for n epsilon, we can pick again a cutoff of this converging of this of this which means that z n and y we can split this right but z n and y n z n y n because z n and y n their distance is less than one over n right if we pick n greater than epsilon over 2, then this we have, we can have this less than, less than this. And this is converging, right? Kind of less than this. So Zn converges to y. So Z is complete. Right? Because, why? Because for any Z, Cauchy, and Z, right? We have Zn converge to y. Right? For any Cauchy, we have this converge to y. So, where we use the density? Where do we use the density? 
Well, first we use the density here, right? But it's not quite obvious, right? But we see that we use the density so we can, this is exactly equal to one over n. We can make this arbitrarily small, right? We can make those arbitrarily small. And also when we're, so we can measure why is Cauchy, right? We use this to show that why is Cauchy and why is Cauchy and we use our assumption convergence z we have that it converges some point y and z and second is that um we see here right, again we use the density right Let's, we again use the density to show that z n converges to y right we, so everything is about triangle inequality and yeah everything's about triangle inequality so Z is complete. Okay, so you see we can apply this to our case. For our case, if we let Joe, the metric is equal to that D, Z is equal to Y, A is equal to HX. So if we can show that every Cauchy sequence in HX converges in Y, then we're we're done the proof. Right? We're showing that Y D is complete and H is an isometric embedding. So let's start with the Cauchy sequence in HX. We can express this in terms of this, right? So I just I just skipped some explanations, but let's give in a Cauchy sequence in HX. And for Cauchy, which means that da da da, we have this. Let's see what this, which is equal to this, is less than epsilon, which means that this sequence is Cauchy in X. If you're Cauchy in the next, then you belong to the X tilde to set up all Cauchy sequences. Then we can define your equivalence class. We have that this, the converge to this as above. Okay, why? I think it's somewhere, we show that H, HX is then some Y, right? Give it a sequence, then this converges to this, okay? But we just use it again. We use this result again. This is Cauchy and X, so we can define the equivalence class. But we know that this, this converges to X, so as above. Yeah, where we showed H, X, this, and Y. So Y, D is complete, which concludes our proof, which we finish our proof. Okay, so we show that any metric space can be isometric embedding into a complete metric space. Or y d is complete. It's very abstract, right? So here we have a definition is that for any metric space and an H isometric embedding or y is complete, then we define the closure of HX. Like we know that this is complete, right? Because it is a closed subset of a complete metric space, then it is complete. So this is complete. And under the restricted metric, for H bar hx bar is called n completion effects right so we've shown that every metric space has a completion right? has, has a completion but is the completion unique right is the completion unique if the completion might be different then we're not happy right then why would you why would you why would us the, discuss the completion because Every time we might discuss some different completions, right? So it is unstable, but we want it to be unique. So at X, um, okay, so we have Y, so T, so X is our original matrix, T, T tilde, is it T, why is it T prime? It should be T tilde, okay, so, <coughs> If we have T and T tilde, both isometric embeddings of X into Y, Y tilde, and they're both complete metric spaces. Okay? So here's our notation. Here's our notation. Then, <coughs> we show that there exists an isometry H from TX to closure of TX to the closure of T tilde X. There exists an isometry. Okay, so they are isometrically the same. So they are like, they are isometrically the same. Isometric, homeomorphic or something like that. So they're kind of the same, right? And up to an isometry. 
So for for this theorem, well, let's just start with some notations. Let's be like a couple of different ways. T is isometry, Tx is W. T tilde is isometric, so T tilde x is equal to uh, and moreover, 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 this isometry restricted on when the its domain is restricted on um, this, right? Which is which is this set? I mean, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Okay, so, and our proof, our proof doesn't really matter, right? We just, we just, we just, we can just start from here to here. Like it doesn't matter, right? Delta prime, this, restricted is equal to, when restricted on. Cause, we're on, we're on the, we're, we map from the closure to the closure, right? But if we take away the closure, just purely, if it's just purely the range, right? If we have that, if this isometry is on purely the range, it is equal to T of T tilde. Inverse, right? So H, this is what H did. This is what H did, but H is from the closure of t prime x, the closure of this, to the closure of this, right? But when we're just on this, H, what H did is it maps here and maps here. Like, this, this is what H did, right? Right, this is what H did. When we're restricted on the original space, because we're mapping from the closure to closure. We're mapping from completion to completion, and that these two completions are isometric. Okay. So we let this be given the two complete space. T is isometry, such that we have this. T tilde is isometry, such that we have this. We want an isometry be that, yes, see, the same thing I've been talking about. From W tilde to W. So we let d hat to be okay let's say actually okay just for notation notation is kind of dead we let this to be the restricted matrix. so we just talk about the restricted metric okay so wd w tilde d tilde subspace of subspace of y and y tilde okay so just some notation all right Step one is to show that H is well defined. So give it any point in Y tilde closure, we can find a sequence that converges to it, Y tilde N. Right? And we do our mapping, we do our mapping because they're isometries, so we have this. Right? But first we know that convergence sequences are Cauchy. Right, convergence sequences are Cauchy. This is no matter what. Cauchy not necessarily converges, but converge always Cauchy by triangle inequality. And if this is Cauchy, if this is Cauchy then this is Cauchy. This is Cauchy, which means that, but it is complete, right? The blue bar is complete, then it converges to some y hat. And we define h of total h of to y tilde is equal to y hat, okay? So this we, we define h n this way. Suppose that we want to show that it is well defined. Suppose there's another sequence converges to y tilde, then from here, right, they both converge to y tilde, and from here we see that we just do triangle inequality, Right. So if we just let y prime n and y hat prime n you go to this, which is mapping, and because they're isometries, so we have this. Right? You can inherit from this to this. As we have this, this converges to y hat. 
and we can make them arbitrarily close. So we guess that, well, does this converge to y hat? Well, yes, because as you can see, we have, this is because this converges to y hat, right? So this is m that makes this true. And we have, we have k that makes this true. Okay, so when n is greater than the maximum, we can estimate their distance by triangle inequality. So we have y prime hat n goes to y hat. So it is defined independent of choice of sequence that converges to y to it. So h is well defined. Okay. Now, which if, if it's independent of the choice of sequences, so if y tilde lies in the space already, then the constant sequence converges to y. And we have this is equal to this, which is equal to. So we're restricted on this, it is just a composition of this. Okay. And our second step is to show that h is an isometry. Well, for any point in a closure, two points in a closure, we pick two sequences that converge to it. And so here, dx and y in is this is by triangle inequality. So we move this here, it gives this. Similarly, if we start from this, we can triangle inequality this, and we move this, we move this here, we have this as I think with this. So we see that we have this and also this. Which means that we have their actual values less than with this. But they can make arbitrarily small, right? They can go to zero. So we have this important thing. Okay, so if we if we're first shown this, so as above, if we let, right, if we just let x n, x hat n, y n, y hat n, then we know that this converges to this and this converges to this, right, by our definition of h. We can similarly show this, right, as as I mean as this process, right. As this this we have this, so we can similarly show this, which means that this is equal to the limit of this, but it is equal to the limit of this because they're isometric, isometric. But this is equal to this. So, H is an isometry. Now the last thing we have to show that H is surjective. Uh, to show it's surjective, well, note that for any point x hat, we can pick a sequence that converges x hat, right? And we we'll x, we just let x tilde in to be equal to this, right? We go back to x and we go to w tilde. Well, as this converge, it is Cauchy. Right? And there are isometry, so it means that this is also Cauchy. If it's Cauchy, then it converges. We have this, because they're in a complete space, a complete metric space. So, we see that this, right? We see, we, then we have this. X to the goes to X, X to the N goes to X. And we see that from this, our x hat n converges to x hat, so this is equal to this. Why? Because if we just define another sequence, right? y n is this, and y hat n is equal to this, then y hat n is equal to this, which is just equal to x hat n. So y hat n goes to x hat. Right? Define y n to this. Because we're given this sequence goes to x. We define y n is equal to this and y hat n is equal to this. Then y hat n is equal to this, but it's just equal to x hat n. And x hat n goes to x hat. So, so it is surjective. H is surjective. It's isometric, it is surjective. And right, it is kind of it is unique. Uh, unique up to an isometry.
So we show that there's an there's an H bijective. Kind of like bijective, right? From from bijective bijective uh isometry. Okay? Bijective isometry. So it is unique up to an N isometry. Okay, so this is we see that conclusions are unique up to an isometry. So that's everything for this lecture. I'll see you guys next time.